All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's Molesburg panel time. David Swerdlick, assistant editor at uh, Washington Post, Post Everything and uh, WashingtonPost.com. Larry Elder, radio host, The Larry Elder Show, author of Dear Father, Dear Son, Two Lives, Eight Hours, and it's LarryElder.com. Hello, gentlemen. Uh, let me start, Thanks, of course, with the, um, with the decision by the Supreme Court uh, today, David, which comes on the heels of the decision by the Supreme Court yesterday. Right. And um, I, I just, you know, I, I feel that uh, the, the, the court is now just a totally political animal and nothing else. Well, Steve, when you're talking about the decision today on marriage equality, you know, we talked about this on your show a few weeks ago. First of all, I don't really think it's a conservative notion for the government to get in the way of two people who love each other wanting to get married. Second of all, I think this is just the case once you get past all the sturm and drang of the dueling decisions by uh, the different justices. Look, it, the 14th Amendment equal protection analysis uh, sort of trumped the Tenth Amendment, leave it up to the state's analysis. I, I don't see that as a partisan thing, certainly not in this case. Larry? Uh, well, I think he accurately described exactly what happened. I just disagree with it. Uh, I, I live in California, and I voted twice in favor of same-sex marriage, and my fellow Californians voted twice uh, against me uh, in favor of traditional marriage. I can live with that. This is a state right matter. The same as abortion. I feel that this decision is very similar to the abortion decision that rammed a decision down all 50 states, even though most of the population lived in a state where abortion was already legal, just as most of the population lived in states where same-sex marriage is always legal. Let the political process go. What, what about having a few states that have a different point of view? Why can't we have that? Isn't that what the whole concept of federalism is all about? See, the problem with your analysis, Larry, I understand what you're saying, and I think you laid it out pretty well there, but the problem is, is that states cannot usurp the, or usurp maybe is not the right word, the 14th Amendment equal right. protection guarantee of the United States Constitution has to, be, has to be maintained and has to be respected, and a state law can't contravene that. There's a lot of jurisprudence on this in the state courts that have led up to the Supreme Court's decision. Yeah, I, I know you feel that way. Remember, it's a 5-4 decision. That's how close this is. This is not, in my opinion, an equal protection argument. You don't have a right to be married just because you want to marry somebody of the same sex. And pretty soon, I'm telling you, someone's going to want to marry two people or three people or four people, and I want to know what your analysis is going to be then. Are you going to tell me that the equal protection clause prevents somebody from marrying two or three people, but okay to marry somebody who's the same sex? That doesn't well, make a whole lot of sense to me. Larry, we actually agree on this. You don't have a right to marry any state can ban marriage altogether. The Equal Protection Guarantee says that the state can't hold out civil rights for one right, group then David, and take know, it away a, from another so group. David, That's there's the there's difference. There's an op-ed in today's in Politico uh, by an uh, Indiana University student or, or, or professor. Uh, I, I know there's a difference, but I don't know which one. And uh -huh. and he wants he's he's battling for uh, polygamy, right to, to pro polygamous it's marriage. It is coming. It is coming. Again, if so, wait, David, by David, no, by your but, but, analysis. But, but my 14th Amendment analysis still stands, Steve, because you can ban polygamy for everybody, but you can't allow certain people to have it and other people not to but have it. But I don't it. see That's that. I don't, I don't see means. that. What's the difference between why should two, two loving people be able to marry, but three shouldn't? What about equal protection? They all want to be married, but they want to be married to, to each other. Okay, well, when, when we get to that point, we can have a discussion about oh, it. But I'm we're talking about get, today's That's rule. Larry's point. We're going to get to that point. And, and what you want to do is, is defer the discussion down the road. This is what's going on right now. We're going to be having this challenge pretty soon. Someone's going to want to marry his brother, his sister, his horse. And then I want to hear what your analysis is going to be. Well, my analysis on that then is two parts. One is, is that the Supreme Court in race cases and other rights cases has always asserted the right to say that there's a compelling state interest to prevent something. So, for instance, on something like incest, yeah. The, the Supreme Court can rule that there's a compelling All right, state guys, interest we'll to get into. We'll Wait, pick, no, 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 this is important we'll point, We'll pick Steve. this up, part two of the panel, coming your way. All right, folks, we're back with the panel. David Swerdlick, Larry Elder. Before we continue, I just want to bring you up to date. Uh, the breaking news as we took to the air, uh, the two fugitives who were on the run from the Clinton prison facility in upstate New York, and they've been on the run for uh, nearly three weeks now. One of those uh, fugitives has been shot and killed. Richard Matt shot 14 miles approximately away from that cabin. Uh, where the uh, police found uh, DNA evidence that the two had been there, or at least that one of the two had been there uh, several days ago. So 14 miles away from that cabin, 
Uh, one of the fugitives, Richard Matt, has been shot and killed by authorities, and David Sweat is still on the run, uh, being pursued, but they do not yet know exactly, or they're not telling us if they do, where he is located. So one down, one to go. All right, David, by the way, uh, what's coming up at uh, Post Everything at the Washington Post this weekend? So for the Sunday Outlook, our uh, lead article is a very engaging piece about how uh, the big countries, including the United States, have essentially ruined uh, the developing countries with our pollution. And so the, the, the author of the piece is arguing that that means we're going to have to, at some point, let those folks from the developing world here because we've essentially <laughs> decimated their countries. Yeah, uh, provocative piece. <laughs> oh, and, I can't, I, and I, really, you've just spurred my interest. I, I can't wait to read that. And I want, please help me get that guy on on Monday or Tuesday because I want to have that debate. And Larry, I'm sure you do, too. <laughs> OK, uh, Washington Post Sunday Outlook. You got it. I can't it. wait to read it. All right, David, um, let, let, let's move on to, uh, to sure. the flag if, if we can here. Um, are, you, are you shocked? And what's your take on, on the swiftness and, and the, uh, the, in my view, really overreaction and politically motivated capitulation that everybody and anybody is taking the flag down and, and Apple is banning uh, Confederate uh, war game apps on their at their app store. I mean, my God, you got people who study the Civil War, who who write about the Civil War, who I, I, what are they supposed to be? Be they thrown out of the country now? Yeah, so listen, I may surprise you guys on this one. Look, I do think clearly it's appropriate to remove the Confederate battle flag from any state displays, the state uh, capital grounds, the, the, these uh, state uh, buildings. That, that to me has always been inappropriate. Uh, but I am actually not for banning things as a general rule. So in terms of people wanting to fly it on their private property in their free time, on their hats, on their shirts, on their trucks, on their bumper stickers, uh, I actually think, look, if you want to have a message out there with your own free time and your own free speech saying that I'm for the losing side in a cause that was fighting to preserve slavery, hey, go ahead. But Larry, you can't buy it at Amazon. You can buy Hitler pictures, as, as Ben Stein said to me yesterday, or Stalin paraphernalia, or Che Guevara, or any of those murderers, but you can't buy any more Confederate flag stuff. And, and where do we stop? Uh, the Washington Monument, uh, George Washington owned slaves, Thomas Jefferson owned slaves. How far do you want to go? I am amazed that just days after nine people were viciously slaughtered, uh, this has morphed into a discussion about the Confederate flag. Bill and Ruth did not stand up there after worshiping for an hour with these nine people and whip out a Confederate flag and shoot people. He whipped out a 45. We ought to be but talking Larry, about. But Larry, we, we saw him posing with those. We saw him posing with the Confederate flag. We saw photos of him with the Rhodesian and the and the uh, apartheid South African flag. I mean, that 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 was out there very rapidly after the after those. He, he, also, uh, he also had a, he also had a gold T-shirt on. Should we ban that too? He also had the flag of Rhodesia in South Africa. Ban all of those. This guy was a deviant the same way Charlie Manson, who wanted to start a race war, was a deviant. And Manson had a following. This guy couldn't even get anybody, David. D he D complained D in his manifesto. D even the Klan wouldn't help him. David, he was also an atheist. So should we come down on atheists? I don't even know what we're arguing about here. Like I just said, freedom of speech. I'm not for banning these flags, but certainly uh, Governor Nikki Haley, a Republican, an Asian American Republican, I think made the right call in this case to say, look, it shouldn't be flown on the state capitol because, or this, however they had it configured in South Carolina, because you're talking about then it representing the government of South Carolina, which is part of the United States, it, which it, fought it against the Confederacy. And oh, by the way, people's tax dollars, including African American citizens and 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 any citizen who objects to the Confederate message, are 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 subsidizing that. But on people's free time, on their bumper stickers, have at it. David, the question is whether this flag had anything to do with what happened in Charleston. And the answer is, we don't know. It doesn't look like it has anything whatever to do with it. Why didn't we have a discussion when Charlie Manson wanted to start a race war? Was he inspired by the Confederate flag? Was he inspired by, 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 by racist symbols? We thought of him as a deviant nut, the same way we ought to think about this guy. I don't know how this jump starts a conversation about the Confederate flag. And by the way, wait, wait, David, David yeah. there is conversation already. It was on CNN, Don Lemon, yeah. and Ashley Banfield, about the Jefferson Memorial. Uh, I mean, so th well, I, this is. I don't. I don't. I don't. For, for the record, I don't agree with taking down the Jefferson but Memorial. But taxpayer. But wait a minute. Black taxpayer dollars go to maintain well, it, and they may. And he, he was a slave slaves. owner. Don't slave. Thomas Jefferson. The con look. No. Let, don't. I'm not going down that road with you guys. The Confederate flag is a symbol of. The, con the Confederate battle flag, let me not get tweets coming at me, the Confederate <laughs> battle flag is specifically a symbol of the Confederate 
fight its treasonous rebellion against the United States. Thomas Jefferson was a slave okay. owner. He also wrote the greatest okay. document to human Gotta go, guys. Ever, David Swerdlick, Larry Elder, thank you. We're coming back, spinning the law with Kendall Coffee. Don't go away.